Good morning world, this is Pastor John Cranwell and we're in the GRV TV broadcasting station here in Quezon City, Philippines and it's a great day and I'm looking forward to do some more teaching about uh, is hell really real? Indeed okay, it. but before I do I just want to say this um, please notice my shirt I am a voice and on the back here what does it say, Chris? Repent. Or question mark. Okay. Now these words are taken from the Bible, from Matthew. It's where John the Baptist is baptizing his people uh, in the River Jordan. And people come from many regions around there who are being baptized for their sins. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders, came down and uh, he said to them, Who warned you of the wrath to come, you snakes and vipers and hypocrites? Therefore bring forth fruits worthy of your repentance. John the Baptist preached repentance and he spoke about God's wrath, which is the punishment of hellfire if you don't follow his son Jesus Christ, believe in him and follow him. So this morning we're going to talk more about the devil and hell. And uh, let's have a look now. Chris, um, I wanted to share first uh, from the Bible some verses in the book of Revelation. So this is part two, huh? This is part two, yeah. And uh, it says here in Revelation chapter 20, Then, this is John uh, saying this, I saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key of the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit is hell, he's referring to, and a heavy chain in his hand. People are chained up down there. He sees the dragon, the old serpent, who is the devil, Satan, the devil Satan, the old serpent, that's who he is, and bound him in chains for how long? A thousand years? The <laughs> angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and looked, locked, so Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years were finished. After he must be released for a little while. Okay, so here we see that um, the reality of the devil the devil is real and so we must understand that Christ's power is more powerful than the power of the devil God has got more power than the devil the devil has power yes he has power to deceive he has the power to hurt he has the power to kill there's a power for many things, but overall, Jesus has more power. God has more power. So, Chris, um, do you have any questions about this? Uh, I cannot imagine a bottomless pit. Bottomless meaning... Bottomless pit. There's no bottom. Well, actually, in Australia, in South Australia, Mount Gambia, down the southeast of South Australia, there's a, a, a lake there called the Blue Lake. And they have these divers who dive down to see who can get dive down the furthest. And there's, no one has found the bottom yet. Really? No one's found the bottom yet. It, it, right up to now. I've never heard anything about so it. One of my then friends. Then they, they went back up. Yes, they go down. They have a, a long rope and they have different points. And they have people at different points with aqualangs on because uh, it's a free dive. And one of my friends... Uh, he, hold, he held, going, I don't know if he held the world record now, but his wife also held the, the women's world record for the deepest dive in the world, going back uh, quite a few years now. So it's bottomless. Oh, thanks. Um, I love grapes. Are they seedless? This is uh, seedless. Right, thanks, Chris. Mm. Unlimited. Masalak. Yeah, that's like in, in Surigao, there is a river there. We call it Enchanted River. No bottom. No bottom. So there are a lot of scuba divers trying to to measure the the, the bottom of that river. But they can't get there. They cannot get it. So they just the option is just to, to go back. Right. There's no bottom. Just like the bottomless the pit. bottomless pit of hell. So that means there's endless amounts of people lying on top of each other all over the bottomless pit. And pain and suffering. It's really hard to imagine such agony, such eternal agony. So yes, uh, the devil is real. 
Um, so let's have a look at another part of the scripture here. Let's have a look. It's dangerous, no? It's really scary. Yeah. To be, and uh, so to be in hell, so he's bound up in chains during this time factor, which is coming very soon. And so that he can't deceive the nations for a thousand years. And when he comes out, man, he'll be roaring like a lion. And he'll be out there to make up for lost time. You can bet your bottom dollar on that one. So, uh, yes, the devil is very, very real. So let's have a look at another scripture, shall we? Let's have a look about the, another scripture about the reality of the devil, of Satan. No longer called Lucifer. In Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 and we all know this story in the Garden of Eden we know this story so let's just go to it and let's just clarify a few things uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 the serpent this is called the serpent with the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made one day he asked the woman, Eve, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Did God not say? He's questioning God. How dare we do that? Of course we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden. The woman replied. <laughs> Whoops, the woman has been deceived. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. He's a liar. When Jesus was confronting the Pharisees, the religious leaders of his time, and scribes and, and that, he, he said to them, Woe to you hypocrites, you snakes and vipers, thieves and robbers, you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. Therefore, you have your father the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning, a liar, the father of all lies, there's no truth in him, and you follow his ways. And so... So here is Satan here deceiving Eve, telling her a lie. You won't die. And God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. What a lie. Your eyes will be opened, yes, and you realize that you're naked and, uh, you'll, and you'll hide behind the trees and God's going to call out to your husband, Adam, where are you? Yeah? Okay. So the devil, he hasn't stopped. He started deceiving right back then and he hasn't stopped. When you join any religion, you are being deceived by the devil. Because the devil created these religions through sinful man. What would you prefer to hear? The truth or a lie? Chris, what would you believe? What would you rather believe? The truth or a lie? The truth, of course. The truth, of course. But I have a question. Only one? <laughs> <laughs> I have many questions. Yes. What would be the greatest sin that a man can do for, for God not to forgive him? Well, is there an unforgivable sin? Meaning? There's only one unforgivable sin. What's that? And that is Jesus, well, the religious people were saying that he had a demon in him. And he said, the only, un only sin that cannot be forgiven is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, which is what they did when they oh. said Jesus had a demon in him. But blasphemy, we, we blaspheme God, we blaspheme Jesus. And the Bible says you must not use his name in vain. You must use, not use his name as a swear word. Well, you wouldn't use your mother's name, would you? The lo lovely lady that raised you up, gave you birth and raised you up with, a, with your father. You wouldn't use her name as a swear word, would you? Or Buddha or Muhammad or anything like that. But yes, you'd use Jesus' name and God's name as a swear word. So that's so, unforgivable. So to blaspheme God is forgivable. To blaspheme Jesus is forgivable. But to blaspheme the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. And you say, what about murder? What about rape? What about pedophilia? What about um, all these things that are happening in the world today? Mm. Um, the kidnapping of, of children. Cutting or, the neck, the head. Yeah. Like the is that forgivable? Yes, it is. Because it's not the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. There's so many sins in this world, and every sin is forgivable, except for the sin 
of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. If you're very sorry about your sin, right? Absolutely, and to do that, you sh you bring forth fruits worthy of your repentance, as um, John the Baptist said to these religious leaders, not just to the religious leaders, who warned you of the wrath to come, therefore bring forth fruits of worthy of your repentance, meaning to prove to God, the devil, others and yourself, that you've truly repented. You've made a U-turn in your life, you st stop following your religion, you stop, stop doing your sins with God's help, he'll help you, um, you'll, you'll sin less but you'll be more aware of your sin and you'll realise how sinful you've really been um, but, and God will forgive you each time you repent. King David, he did, he did a lot of sins. I did a study of him for six months once and I found out he did 11 gross sins that I could find and uh, two of them were um, adultery and murder, premeditated murder, actually, and God forgave him because he held a short account with him, and he always repented after every sin. So this is a lesson for us. Repentance is, is that's why Jesus preached it, John the Baptist preached it, and that's what we must preach it today, repentance. We must repent. And when we repent, God forgives. Well, I'm so, so glad about that one, because I walked for years not knowing that I'd be forgiven. Knowing I was a sinner, knowing I was doing wrong, and the burden is very heavy on you, and when you come under the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in a born-again church meeting, you are really feeling terrible, especially when the preacher says, if you don't repent, you'll burn in hell. You've sinned against the Holy God, you need to repent now. And you'd feel so bad about yourself, you know. And some of the sins we've done, we call them secret sins, that even the Roman Catholics wouldn't uh, confess to the, the priest in the confessionary, which doesn't work anyhow. But they were too ashamed to tell. And we are too ashamed to tell even our best friend of our worst sin, our secret sin. But God knows about it, and he forgives that too. Isn't that good news? How about if somebody curses God? And then he'll tell, there's no God. Why you did this to me? Where are you? I don't believe you. Right. You are not. You Good are not question. God. There's, there's no God. Some Good people question, will question. say like that. Yes, they, they, some of them say, if you're there. Yeah, yeah, like that. Which is putting doubt yeah, well, that there is a God. Why did you kill my son, my children? Like yeah. That, something like that. And so, why do you do this to me? Hey, wait now. Wait a minute. We do those things to ourselves. We reap the, the repercussions or the consequences of our sin. The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. And it does. It really does. And so when your sin is found out, you reap the consequences of that sin. So it's better to when you realize you sin is to repent. Hold a short account with God, repent, because the longer you don't repent, the heavier the burden gets on you and your life is like being in a prison. It's like being in hell, you know, not literally, but you're in a place where, a place of unforgiveness. You haven't been forgiven. And when you come to Christ, when you get born again and become a new person in Christ, forgiveness, you see, you can't enter heaven without being forgiven. And when you come to Christ, the first thing he does is forgive you of all your sins, secret ones and all. Isn't that good news, Chris? Isn't that the news people want to hear? Yeah, especially now, in today's troubled, corrupt world. Now I have another question. Another one. This this or guy is full of questions. It's good to have questions. Yeah, this is more interesting, you know. Uh, <coughs> for example, if you are already in hell, right? So there's no way that you can be transferred to heaven. It would be eternal hell, eternal suffering, eternal you know punishment like that. Well, Chris, is there any possibility that you can be transferred to the uh, to heaven or in the Roman Catholic there's purgatory like that? Well, purgatory doesn't exist. It's just a figment so of the imagination. Okay, remove purgatory, but can you be transferred to heaven? No. No way? You see, the Bible says that the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night for eternity. But having said that, there's many, there's been thousands of people who actually died on an operating table or wherever they might be have died they've gone to hell and they've come back again to tell the story I've, I've met one twice a big guy that traveled yeah, the a world there's many stories in YouTube you know 
Yes. That they went to hell or they went to heaven. And just God showed it. showed him or her about hell and about heaven. Well, if you want to read a really really good book, The Divine Revelation of Hell by Mary K. Baxter. Divine Revelation of Hell by Mary K. Baxter. She does one on heaven too. In fact, the Lord gave me a few stories about heaven. And, you know, it's so glorious, so holy, so perfect, so beautiful. Uh, it's just unimaginable. And I had never had any idea, just a Bible idea of heaven. But he showed me this, to, in, and I wrote these stories like this, watching my hand writing, tears running down my face. And when I went to share the stories with groups and people, I just, I just bent over and tears running down my face. I could hardly speak. It was so holy and so beautiful. But hell, horrific place. And that's where the devil's domain is. It's not a kingdom. God is the king. His kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, which Christ proclaimed when he was ministering for three and a half years after his baptism by John. And so heaven and hell is a real place. Heaven is governed by God, and hell, the devil's domain, is governed by Satan, the devil. Yes, Chris, um, so we've got to make sure we get this message out, so, and we must have a voice today to have a voice to tell the people that there is a hell, there is a devil, there is a devil, but there is a God, a real God of the Bible, and there is a real heaven, and there is forgiveness that is real, and, and to repent is real. And to be born again is real. You don't go back in your mother's womb and come out twice. You actually, are, it's a spiritual birth to be born again. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you. He said, wrote this to Nicodemus, a religious man and uh, leader. And uh, he said, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus, he said, but how can I go back in my mother's womb and come out again? I mean... And he, he had these questions for Jesus. And Jesus says, because he, when, he, when he said that, his eyes must have gone pop like this. His mouth gone huh? in surprise. So he said, do not be surprised that I say to you, you must be born again. Okay, Lum? Okay? Is, okay. Is, does that answer that question? Yeah, another question. Another one. Oh, good. So God made hell and heaven. Yes, he created everything. Including hell and heaven. I cannot imagine that this, uh, there are words in the Bible that God is love. Well, you and see, why did He create uh, hell? Well, you see, when we just when we are in a place of disobedience, we're at home, their parents, we're at school, the school teacher. When we disobey, is it right? Is it justified for us to be punished? Is that right or wrong? Should we be punished? Yeah, but temporary punishment. Yes, but, but when we're we say about world. hell, hell is an immortal punishment. Well, no ending, bottomless pit. Yes. I cannot imagine how painful and how scary is that place, you know. Oh, I can't either, Chris. <laughs> I really can't either. So, I mean, but you God see, allowed that? We're on a temporal, in a temporal world with a temporal life. But then eternity <coughs> is forever. <coughs> and so... What we do about Christ, whilst we are in this temporal world alive, we're still breathing, we can still speak, uh, we can still move, the blood's still coursing through our veins. Whilst we're in that condition of life, we have the opportunity to say yes to Jesus and no to our religion, no to our sin, and he'll forgive us. But if we don't do that, if we follow our, and do our own thing instead of doing God's thing, because God's plan was for everybody to have a personal relationship with him, and in denying that, in rejecting that, we're rejecting Him and God, uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We're rejecting heaven. And so our punishment is the opposite, is hell. We must be punished. God is a just God. And He won't punish those who repent. He'll forgive them. So there's two sides to the story. Heaven and hell, forgiveness and punishment. So we have a choice of what we do about His beautiful Son, who for God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son for you that if you believe in him and to believe means to have a, a strong conviction uh, and just do it it means for you to have a stable mind that you believe the history the bible is our history and that you apply it to your own life and then believe in jesus and follow him it's a very powerful word believe so if we don't believe 
and we believe in our doing our own thing and we live for ourselves and we don't live for the Lord, then we are punished. It's just like at school. If you're, if you're speaking in school at a class or, or making a noise and the teacher tells you to stop, he, he'll give you a second chance. But if you don't, you get the stick in my days. I got the stick many times <laughs> and punished by my mum too. Um, I, I got think the stick. in the States, no more punishment for children. No more beating the well, children. This is what's happening in this corrupt world. There's many things, many sins that have been legalized now. Many sins. I mean, what does it say in the Bible about a man marrying a man and having sex with a man? What does it say about a woman marrying a woman and having sex with a woman? And now it's legalized. But in God's eyes, it's a sin. You look in the Bible, you'll find different li various lists. There's about five or six different lists of the people that don't go to heaven. And in those lists are, are, are the homosexuals. They don't go there. They're mixed in with the liars, the people that hate their parents. They're mixed in with the idolaters, the adulterers, the murderers, the stealers. They're all mixed in there. <coughs> it's all sin. So God punishes sin. But when we confess our sin to him, not in the confession or anywhere else, to anybody else, but when we confess our sin to him, he forgives us. And when you get forgiven, you know that you're forgiven. And God says about 53 times in the Bible, three times specifically, and 50 times somewhere like it, I will remember your sin no more. Who wants to remember their sin, Chris? Mm -hmm. he, uh, he will forget devil, all our sins. Yeah. So we must forget that too because when we are born again, we become a new person in Christ. All old things are passed away. Behold, the new has come. So we become a new person in Christ with all our sins forgiven, heading for heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have a personal relationship with them for the rest of our lives until he comes again, uh, which is very soon. We're in those last days today, I believe. So... Have you any more questions, Chris? Yeah, yeah, uh, I think... Good. Can you describe once again what is the face of the devil and what is hell? What what, is can hell? you describe hell? Well, so these people that won't, uh, do not believe in God and cursing God or whatever, they will know that that hell is hell. <laughs> right. That's a scary place. Okay. So can you describe the devil first and then... Okay. What is the situation in hell? How, well, with, how does it look like? With hell, I heard it said once that um, we did a, a gospel drama on a stage with a, with a big audience many years ago in New Zealand. And it was about hell. And this guy didn't believe in hell. He fell off his ladder and went to hell. And everything went dark. The whole theatre went dark and just a little light on his face. And he said, where am I? Somebody said in the background, well, it isn't heaven. And then the devil started laughing in the background. He's just this little <coughs> light on his face. Oh, no. I thought it was hell when my wife forgot to put peanut butter in my sandwiches. I thought that was hell on earth. And so people have a strange concept of hell. Yes, it is fire, but it's sulfuric fire. And it burns and you, you can't get it off. You oh. can't get sulfur fire off you. It just keeps burning and burning. And then... Uh, with the the devil, with the devil, well, we see pictures of him created by artists. He's got horns and a tail. He's all red, but I don't believe that. That's just a cartoon. That's just a fantasy thing um, to depict him. But I believe, you see, once he was a, the most beautiful being in heaven, but when he when sin enters enters his heart, and he committed the sin of pride God kicked him out of heaven and a third of the demons went with him so what was he beautiful then have you ever seen a person who gets angry yeah. very and, and they're they're very nice they can be a nice person but when anger comes in them their whole face changes <laughs> well I believe that Satan's face from being very uh, guapa which I say here very um, or uh, handsome, the most handsomest, I believe his face would have turned so ugly, so gruesome, and I believe his whole appearance would have become 
gruesome, maybe even hunchback and, and horrible claws, you know, like long finger, I don't know. But I can imagine him being the most ugliest being that's ever been in, 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 in the universe. universe. And then you get angry, you become yes. ugly universe. Very, <laughs> very, very. Okay, describe about hell. Well, hell, the, Jesus said it's a place of outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why gnashing of teeth? Because of all the worms and maggots, and scorpions and locusts, that's large grasshoppers. Every pulse beat attacking you with the sulfuric flames burning, 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 burning forever and ever in outer darkness, tripping over and being tripped over by the, all the people who have been there since the first person died and went to hell. Okay, you, you remember the, the days of Noah when the whole of the population of the world didn't believe in the flood, but they all drowned and went to hell immediately. Well, and all those who went to hell before, who were not godly, okay, went to hell. And so hell is filled up with people, full. The Bible says that the mouth of hell opens up wider every day. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and they have no rest day or night. So don't go there. Make sure you go to heaven in the golden city where it's peaceful and quiet. God's presence is there. God is there. The Holy Spirit, the glory of God, Jesus, <coughs> the angels. It's peaceful and quiet. Serene. So how do you get there? By repenting of your sins. By converting from your religion. That's how you get there. Repent therefore and be converted so that your sins shall be washed away and times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent is to make a U-turn in your life. Stop doing the things you used to do to please the devil and start doing the things that please God. How? By reading your Bible, talking to God the Bible way, not the upside down cross way or any other way. The way of some religions they bend down over mm -hmm. on their knees and they pray for five hours. And uh, it's not that way at all. It's not any other way. Uh, uh, it's the only way to worship the Lord is to lift up your holy hands, the Bible says, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's the worshippers He's looking for. He's looking for you. He's like a shepherd. He's going to leave everybody else and go out looking for you. You're important to Him. You're lost. You're lost in your religion, your condition, your sin. You're lost. And He's looking for you now. Will you make yourself available? Will you come to Him? You see, back in those days when Jesus was preaching in the temple, He preached the gospel and many believed in Him, but they did not, did not confess Him. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, <coughs> pardon me, you shall be saved. So that's what you need to do is to repent. How do you do that? By talking to God like this. Please, if you want to make sure you don't go to hell, you don't go and meet the devil, you want to meet the Lord and be with Him forever in heaven, in a quiet, serene place, then please pray this prayer and act upon it. It's the prayer doesn't save you, it's a promise you make to God. And you keep your promise, He keeps His. Please pray this prayer with me. Dear God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm truly sorry for sinning against you, a holy God. But I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again on the third day to forgive me of all my sins. And I also turn away willingly from my religion that cannot forgive my sins and cannot save me from hell or the lake of fire, the second death. To follow only you, my Lord Jesus, I promise you for the rest of my life, Please make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're a new person in Christ. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And now you start doing the things that please God. Stop doing the things that please the devil from now on. You're forgiven. You're saved from hell. So just do your best with God's help. Read your Bible. Talk to God this way. Point others to Jesus. Go to a born-again church and grow in the things of the God of the Bible believe, have a strong conviction of what's happened to you right now. You were born again. You're no longer heading for hell. You're heading for heaven. So one day, that's going to be where you spend eternity 
in the kingdom of heaven, not the domain of hell with the devil who's very real and he's just as real as God is and Jesus and the Holy Spirit in heaven. Okay? So God bless you real good. Just do your best with God's help. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chris. See you next time. Thank you, Brother Pastor John.